Hemolytic Anemia by Dr. Palida Idris To understand this topic better, we need to know few basic facts about RBC. RBC are produced in the bone marrow and they circulate in the peripheral blood for about 120 days. RBCs are cleared by the reticuloendothelial system, mainly by the spleen and the liver. And one RBC contains many hemoglobin. So, what is the definition of hemolysis? The word hemolysis comes from the two words. The first one is heme, which means blood, and the second one is lysis, which means breakdown. Hence, the definition of hemolysis is a premature destruction of RBC, lead to shorten RBC survival in vivo and the release of content into the plasma. Hemolysis can happen inside the blood vessel, which we call intravascular hemolysis, or extravascular in the reticuloendothelial system, which we call extravascular hemolysis. Hemolysis will lead to the increased production of RBC in the bone marrow to compensate the destruction of the RBC. And in this situation, there will be no anemia. But if the increased production of the erythrocyte in the bone marrow cannot sufficiently compensate the destruction of RBC, this will lead to hemolytic anemia. So what happened in hemolysis? In intravascular hemolysis, hemoglobin will be released in the plasma. The free hemoglobin will bind to a protein called heptoglobin to form a complex and cleared by the RES. The free hemoglobin also will be processed and cleared by the kidney leading to the hemoglobinuria or hemosiderinuria. If the heptoglobin has depleted, the heme will be released and will bind to hemopec hemopexin to form a complex and then cleared by the RES. When both heptoglobin and hemopexin has depleted, the remaining heme will weakly bind to the albumin and lipoprotein and it will remain in the circulation. In extravascular hemolysis, the red cells are removed by the macrophage in the RES. In the macrophage, the RBC will be broken down into different components. There will be increased amount of globin and subsequently further broken into amino acids to be reused. The iron will be released and they bind to transferrin to be reused in the bone marrow. Protoporphyrin from the heme protein will further broken down into bilirubin. In hemolysis, there will be increase in the unconjugated bilirubin because the amount exceeds the capacity of liver for conjugation. Hemolysis will also result in the release of lactase dehydrogenase, an enzyme in the RBC. When the unconjugated bilirubin reaches the liver, the conjugation process will occur, resulting in the formation of stercobilinogen in the feces. Some of the bilirubin glucuronides will be reabsorbed, processed by the kidney, and urobilinogen will be excreted in the urine. So, part 2, we will cover the classification of hemolytic anemia.